Hello, my name is Zach Gimignani. I am the CEO and co-founder at Juice Analytics. And today I wanna to share a framework that I've been working on with my friend and colleague, Charlie Pigeon at Belmont University. We've been working on a framework uh, that we feel like is an important way for people to be able to think about how they can go from a problem and data that they have around that problem uh, to uh, leading to actions and insights uh, based on that data. So this is the framework that uh, is uh, that we have laid out that makes it easier to do that. And I've framed it in this presentation around Star Trek as a um, source of inspiration for thinking about uh, solving problems with data. So when, anytime you uh, talk about Star Trek, the elephant in the room is Star Wars. And uh, I just want to take a moment to address all the Star Wars fans out there, of which I am one, uh, about why we are focused on Star Trek in this uh, particular uh, presentation. First reason is that uh, Star Trek is science fiction, where it's fair to say that Star Wars is a space fantasy. So the science, the data science, it's, it seems self-evident to me to focus on Star Trek. Another example, um, just looking at some of the characters in these, uh, uh, in these cultural objects, Spock from Star Trek would say something like this, uh, insufficient facts always invite danger. That's his perspective. You'll see from a lot of the characters uh, that there is this focus on uh, critical thinking and humanity. I think that's very important. Meanwhile, if you look at a character like Han Solo from Star Wars, he's a little less interested in the data. Never tell me the odds is what he likes to say. So we're focused on Star Trek. And this is the problem that Charlie and I faced um, as we were thinking about designing a framework and, and kind of the impetus for us. On the one hand, we all know that a lot of data projects and efforts fail. Uh, they, they're unable to build a solution that leads to action um, and so studies from Gardner and other have shown that uh, a lot of these projects fail. Meanwhile, for Charlie at Belmont, he is uh, he has this great task ahead of him where they want to teach all of the students at Belmont how to solve problems using data. So uh, with these two things in mind, we set out to think of to lay out a framework or an approach to um, working with data that would allow um, lots of different people a pathway to understanding how they could uh, drive action and insights based on that data. So I wanna get into that framework um, in a moment. Why do we use frameworks? Well, frameworks provide a roadmap, a starting place for people so you know um, how you should think about a problem. They also prioritize things that are important and things that are less important. So implicit in a framework is uh, the things that are identified in the framework are critical and the things that have been left out are things that um, really you don't wanna distract yourself with. So it, it gives you a roadmap, a, a starting point, a finishing point and, and what to do along the way. Yep. Now, we want to do more than just uh, create a good framework. We want to create a great framework. And uh, with that in mind, we, we've been thinking about how we wanted to create something that would be flexible. So it could be used whether you're talking about a large data science project across a team that wanted to build a complex model and operationalize it to a student in a classroom uh, thinking about a very straightforward problem um, Regardless of those different environments, we felt like there were commonalities. We wanted to have something that would be able to serve those different environments. We wanted to make it easy to learn. I think frameworks that um, are complex and cumbersome and have a lot of pieces are become things that people don't end up using in practice. 
and along the same line, something that, that was lightweight so that the effort was going into um, the actual work of the framework, not the not not checking a bunch of boxes. So those were some of the things that were driving us in order to create uh, what we hope is on the path to a great framework for analytics. So when do you use this? Um, you use this framework just like uh, the Starfleet in uh, Star Trek has a um, has scenarios where they take action and those where they are where it's not relevant work for them. Uh, we wanted to think about the framework as a really applied where problems could benefit from using data and data analysis. So if you're debating whether um, Star Trek or Star Wars is better, that's not really an arena where data is critical. Uh, so those problems where data is gonna drive the decision-making, where data is available so that, that you can bring that to bear on the discussion. And I will talk a bunch uh, about the audience. So the critical, I think, last criteria for when you wanna apply this framework is when the audience, when the, the data you put together will inform actions of the audience and the audience will do something about it. So um, an analysis for the sake of interest and um, for kind of an academic exercise where you're not really clear what will come of it is not really what we're focused on here. We're trying to drive action through data. So let's get into the framework itself. So the first thing that uh, we thought about as we were wanted, we constructed this framework were the entities that were involved in it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this as a, as the team because I feel like each of these entities or characters need to act together, work together in the process of um, analyzing data and driving a story and action from that data. So who's on the team? First, you start with um, you or the who I also, I think of the captain. So in this case, Captain Kirk from Star Wars, but, but this is the character that um, you, the analyst, you, the person who is driving the analysis, um, uh, you represent the captain. You're the person who is who is the catalyst for this. Uh, you are, you are driving other people to make change, and um, I'll talk more about the captain in a moment. Another important character, and really the starting points, should be the audience, the people that you want to influence, the people who can take action on the data, um, and again, I'll dive into the audience. In this case, this is. Um, Dr. Bones McCoy, who uh, has a number of interesting things to say about this, and I think is actually a great representation of what the audience, how the audience often behaves. And then the last character on the team is the data. So uh, Spock, obviously, we I put Spock in this case. So the data is um, the foundation for your analysis. It is the objective element of this team, um, but all these pieces need to come together and be participants in this process. So one of the first uh, mistakes that people, I find that people make is that they try to exclude themselves and they don't think about the audience when they're doing an analysis. So you have some data and you and there's this concept of, well, the data will tell the story or, or, or we'll, we'll see what comes out of the data. So. I think when people take that perspective, they are um, believing that really the only character that matters is the data. Whereas I'll, I'll show you how important the captain and the audience are as we go through this, this framework. A related problem that I think people struggle with is when the audience and the captain are the same. So it's, if, if you're doing something really just for yourself, or you're not thinking about who you're trying to influence or drive in your um, in this process, then you've kind of excluded that critical character. So um, we see that happen also where people are sort of just inwardly focused um, in, in working with data and doing the analysis. So those are a couple of mistakes. Let's talk about these characters a little bit more. So in your role as the person who is driving um, problem solving with data, this is kind of the attitude that I hope people take to it, where they are, um, 
this quote from Captain Kirk, the greatest danger facing us is ourselves and the irrational fear of the unknown. There's no such thing as the unknown, only things temporarily hidden, temporarily not understood. That is, that is you being a, um, pushing out into unknowns in order to try to find insights. Uh, that, that is what I view as the role of the, the captain who's leading this. So what does this person bring into the framework? Well, uh, you should bring your expertise and your own understanding of a problem. So if you're doing, if you're a marketing analyst, you already know a lot about what the key metrics are or what's going on with different campaigns. You, sh you should bring that into your analysis. Don't try to exclude that or be so objective that you exclude a really valuable element that you can contribute. Um, you should also have a mission or a purpose. So what do you want to get get out of this? What is, even by defining the problem itself, you are setting forth a mission. Um, and the captain is the person who does that and, and brings the data skills, the ability to work with data. And everyone's gonna have different, different skills, different capabilities. Um, you know, this can be a limiting factor or it can really open up a lot of opportunities. And then often, I think forgotten in this process is the need for communication skills, the ability to um, take the analysis and insight and communicate that effectively to the audience. So those are some of the really key skills that the captain brings. Let's talk about the audience. Um, and this is our character, Bones McCoy again, and this is his famous cut phrases, uh, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a engineer. There's a number of things that he says, but he's not a data scientist. And I think this is something you'll find if you're presenting to executives or the public, however you're presenting your data. Often the people who are receiving that don't view themselves as an analyst. They don't view themselves as um, necessarily understanding data. And your role is to help them out in that way. So talk a little bit more about the audience. This person, the audience is often a skeptic, but they're also the people who are going to do something with the data. They're in the position to take some action, to take some decisions based on what they're finding. So they have a series of priorities. You know, think about this. If you're in an organization analyzing data and you're presenting this to management, they have a bunch of things that they are already focused on. And understanding those priorities is, is critical because you need to fit into those priorities or address something that they care a lot about. In addition to those priorities, they have things that they can do and things that they can't do. Depending on their role, they might be able to take action, make investment in some area, change their behaviors, but also there are lots of things that they don't have control over and delivering uh, insights to someone in an area where they don't have influence is really just a recipe for frustration. Um, your audience is going to have a certain comfort with data. So we talk, we talk a lot about data literacy, the ability to work with data, understand data. This is something that, I, that a lot of organizations view as an important skill to build up, but is an area where some people are lacking. So if your audience is uncomfortable with data, you need to think about that um, before presenting it. And then uh, for any problem or scenario that you're, you're presenting on, the audience is gonna, they're gonna have some starting assumptions and you might need, need to be able to change how they think about something. So that starting point, understanding that starting point is critical. And the last, our last character is, is Spock, the data. Um, who brings this kind of objective perspective. Your highly emotional reaction is most illogical. So um, the data is a critical element of this and understanding um, what you have in the data, what, how confident you are in the information that you can get your hands on, um, whether you can actually get your hands on useful data uh, is, you know, how accessible is it? Can you get the right information? 
uh, that other people will believe in. Depending on the size, breadth, or depth of your data, uh, that might determine what different ways you can analyze the information. Do you have enough data to build uh, a, a model or algorithms on that data, or is it, sim is it simply about um, slicing and dicing it in, in straightforward ways that will still provide insights? And then is your, is your data expensive to get? If, if you do need to access it, is it something you have to go gather? These are some of the things to think about um, in the data area. So that's, those are the, that's the team of people that need to come together in our framework. The way I think about this framework is that it's a voyage and there are phases in that voyage. So almost think of it like um, climbing a mountain where you are working your way up from a base camp to, to a next level, all the way up to the peak. And, and I'm gonna talk about those different stages because I think um, you, wanna, you wanna understand what stage you're at and what activities take place at each of those stages. So you're, you're sort of traversing these, what I'll show the three stages and each, at each of those stages, all of the characters that I've introduced, that whole team are continue to play an important role at each stage. So stage one is where you're, in a, you're just really trying to define the problem that you wanna tackle. You're defining um, what the audience needs, what their priorities are, and the data you have available. So this is really just kind of setting the stage. This is kind of the base camp of climbing the mountain. Um, defining what is the journey, where, you're, where are you going? Stage two is, is where the, now the, the, the kind of more traditional analysis takes place. You've got the data, you're analyzing that data, trying to find insights in it uh, that are gonna change how you think about the problem. And all those characters, uh, the data, um, you doing the analysis, all those things um, are critical in, in this second stage. And then the last stage, and I think this is where people often forget to climb this last um, stage, is where you are driving change, where you are building a story and thinking about how you want to present that so that you can influence and change the minds of your audience. Each of you have to go through each of those stages. You want to know where you are in this process and um, what you focus on will be a little different and, and the way the different characters, the different team members uh, contribute will be different. One of the things we, we realized as we were laying out these stages is that the different team members um, are featured differently at each of the stages. So at the beginning, I believe it's critical to start with the audience, start with who you are trying to influence, what they care about and how you can change their change their mind using data. And so I believe that that you really want to feature the audience as the starting point in the discovery phase. Even as the captain is defining the problem or the mission and you're understanding what data is available, really start with the audience's needs. As you get into the insights, this is where the data is featured. This is where the analysis is done, um, where you are, you're in this exploratory mode in the insight stage. You're, you're defining theories, you're analyzing the data, you're proving out those theories, and you're trying to find insights uh, that are new in the data. So that's the insight stage. And, and what, it's, it's okay in this phase to have a lot of different things come out of the data. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's okay to be expansive in the insight stage. It's in the next stage that things start to um, need to get focused again. So I almost, I think of this like an accordion where it's, you start with a, with a focused problem and then in the insight stage, things spread out and there's a lot of, there's a, it expands and then in the last phase, you need to you need to come back and focus on on 
what is your core story? What is the, the simplest message that you can convey that is going to influence your audience? Um, defining that, this is where I think the, the captain needs to step forward as the, as the data storyteller. Um, defining what, you, what they want to say in a compelling way that is going to influence um, the audience to take some action. So the third, third stage or the third act of this process is, is driving change. So uh, if we think of this as climbing a mountain across those different stages, there are a few things that I like to highlight that are um, common principles or threads throughout that whole process. So I want to talk about three different principles that we believe really permeate um, all the different stages um, and, and are relevant across those different, uh, across the team members who are involved in this framework. So the first one is, is a concept that I, that I call analysis debt. And it's the, it's the um, avoiding of analysis debt. So now analysis debt is doing things that, will all, that you'll ultimately have to pay for. It will catch up to you. And there are a lot of things that 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 in the process of analysis um, will ultimately cost you. So I'll I'll quickly run through some of these things. So I've given them some names and really brief descriptions. But you know, problems where um, where you're not going to change things through data. Um, going through analysis and always this is very very common where the scope of you start out with a particular problem but as other people get involved the, the scope of the analysis gets broader and broader more questions are asked wouldn't it be interesting if we also knew something else so that's an expanding thing and and that's a problem that will um undermine the success of of a data analysis of solving a specific problem um, with data building on data um, that you don't trust. So if the data isn't good for the beginning, it's garbage in kind of problem where if you, you're building on data that, is, that isn't gonna be trusted, that will catch up to you. Um, failing on, to understand your audience, not being clear about what data you're working with or what it actually means or what data you actually need from people. Um, pandering to the audience, you know, the, going through this whole process, but really doing it in, in order to um, uh, just justify assumptions that the audience already has. Those are problems. And then and this, this last one, letting the data tell its story, which is something I mentioned earlier, when you don't, if you don't think about who is the audience and, and what is your role in it, you just want the data to kind of carry you through that process. These are all forms of analysis debt um, that will cost you. And so the theme is, is to avoid this stuff. And a lot of about avoiding this is, is having the discipline of incorporating all those characters and, and staying focused and disciplined uh, through this process. Um, one of the, the, here's an interesting example for you to think about. Um, recently, information that uh, was leaked from Facebook about the impact that Instagram has on teen girls. There was a group of um, researchers with the best intentions, undoubtedly, at Facebook who, who did, did some research, identified some of these, these impacts, presented that information to the executive team at Facebook, and, and nothing came of it. And nothing came of it in large part because the key metrics and the priorities of the executive team um, were different from what this message was. So there was a breakdown. There's, there's a series of reasons why this data project failed. Nothing came of it. Um, I would, and it's a lot of the things that we've outlined in this framework. Uh, you know, it's it's worth thinking through, but it's things like. Um, you know, the not understanding the priorities of your audience, not having a clear message or story that resonates with your audience, um, 
these are these are some of the things that that break down these this set of analysis that uh, came back and and resulted in effectively a failed data project. So another theme that we wanted to incorporate in this framework and and make sure was was woven throughout it is around the ethics of data. So you can um, use data and logic to justify anything. Um, we know that data can, you know, can always make your case. And really the counterpoint, the only balance to that is, is the ethics and thinking about the implications of what you're doing. So what are some of the questions you want to ask yourself? It applies across all of the different team members. Um, you know, the data that you're collecting are what has been baked. Often there are uh, assumptions that people have that are baking, um, baking things into that data that um, create biases from the very start because of how the data was collected. Just think about like how survey questions are asked and how that might imp uh, have implications for the results that are seen in the data. Um, as the captain, I often get this question from people who are in analyst roles who are saying, you know, how do I, um, you know, if, if I'm creating a data story, how do I not, um, how do, I don't want to be subjective. I don't want to bring my own biases into that data story. Well, the fact is that's, that's unavoidable. You are, you know, you're a person doing, the moment you start, an exercise like this or start analyzing data and trying to solve a problem, you're bringing your biases. The, the approach that I think um, addresses that is to be explicit about and, and interrogate yourself about what are your biases and be explicit about sharing those in the process so that people understand where you're coming from and why, and you, you're clear about those things because it's impossible to not come in with your own subjective opinion. And then finally, you know, the audience is the audience overly influencing? Are you really just trying to serve the needs of the audience? Or are you being honest, intellectually honest about uh, the analysis project in a way that um, ultimately should benefit the audience if you're being truthful about things? So our framework, um, and I'll talk a little about this later, but you know we're we're still getting to another level of detail in this framework and how it will be applied. But we do want to have questions of of ethics built into the process so that people are are asking these questions and we're finding ways, even if you need it, maybe there's another character who needs to be the person who uh, comes in and and shines a light on ethical questions. Uh, early or, or at some other process point in this process. And then the last, the last thing I think that, that anyone who has worked with data understands is that analysis, good analysis really just creates more questions and hopefully better questions. So as you go along um, and you might, you might go through this whole process, those three phases that I talked about, those steps, and, and deliver a series of insights or a story to your audience. And the outcome of that may be another set of questions, another set of, um, another iteration of this whole process. The end is the beginning, really. When, when you get through a good analysis, you're, you're really opening people's minds to more questions and more ways to think about the world. So that's okay, that's good. Like that, uh, think of this as a very iterative process. So um, in conclusion, what we have put together here is a very symmetrical um, framework where we think about the team members, the people who are involved. And, and when, I, when I say people, it could be that it's a very small group. It could be a very large but really those, those roles need to be filled. Those three roles of the, the captain, the audience, the data. And then those team members are going through a process. They're going from the early stages of discovery through insight and change. Always keeping in mind these three principles of, of you know, avoiding that analysis debt, staying focused, 
um, being ethical with the data and recognizing that this is an iterative process. So that's where we've gotten to on this framework. We're really trying to um, keep it focused and simple and lightweight. Um, and this is something that, that um, we are still working on. I'm really excited for where this is going. I am working in, uh, Charlie and I are working to create this process in a real world environment. So we're gonna be creating um, the worksheets and artifacts for the steps in this process and um, applying those in a classroom environment and on some consulting projects where we will um, gather feedback and, and make this something that people can really use, give them kind of the roadmap map. when faced with a problem that's gonna be influenced by data. These are the steps you can go through in order to um, accomplish the kinds of uh, impact that you wanna make when you're working with data. Um, and you know there are probably going to be variations or different ways to apply it in different scenarios. So Belmont has 13 colleges, over 8,000 students. This is the type of thing that we hope can reach all of those people um, and, and go beyond that, um, be applied in lots of other scenarios. So um, that's what we're working on, uh, you know, for, for good or evil, this is, I was, when I thought about the, the symmetrical three by three Rubik's cube kind of structure of this framework, I eventually came around to the Borg, which is a evil entity in uh, Star Trek. It says you will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Hopefully it's not that. Hopefully this is something good. Uh, as Spock says, logic is just beginning. It's not the end of wisdom. So the, the data is really on this path towards, we want data to influence and make people smarter and wiser in their decision-making. And all of which is, I think, a theme that, that we bring to this is that we feel like the people are just as important as the data. So making sure that the machines and all the power that can be brought to bear in analyzing data is, is influenced and balanced by the human aspect. And um, together, I think those things can be very, very powerful if properly balanced. So that is the presentation. I appreciate your attention in sharing this with you. and. Um, I am always available if you want to reach out. Zach Gimignani, I'm at Zach, Z-A-C-H, at juiceanalytics.com. Feel free to reach out to me through that or social channels.